I did it, and it wasn't easy. I've solo climbed Gran Paradiso on the first days of a season, taking the least traveled route where you have to deal with the crevassed terrain before making your way up to the summit. If snow wasn't melting like never before, if the crevasses weren't dissolving hour after hour, and if while solo climbing I would have not made some basic mistakes, the trip could have been dull and myself deprived of the real sense of adventure. I've started to prepare my Grand Paradiso climb way ahead, but my winter alpine mountaineering experience was limited at around 2,000 meters, and training like this was somehow like a gamble. I had no clue if it would suffice, and the thought that I might not be able to acclimate in time was worrying. I didn't stop. I tried to prepare for as many situations possible. Alpine mountaineering is amazing. Doing this during the cold seasons is even better. Doing it alone is dangerous. I left for Italy on a Friday to give myself the time to dry with calm and then rest before heading to the Gran Paradiso National Park on the following Monday. If you want to climb this part of the Gran Paradiso Glacier, you can do it either by Vittorio Emanuele route, the easier and safer path, or by taking the Federico Chabot way, the least traveled and more dangerous. I decided to take the Federico Chabot route because of both the increased risk and the more picturesque views. I don't regret doing it, but now, looking back, I'm aware of how dangerous that route can sometimes become. I remember everyone at the hut waiting for me to see if I will make it back or not. Of course, I made it back, but wait and see how hard this was to accomplish. I left for the summit early that morning. It was a group of four, myself shortly followed by a group of three, and then two best friends planning to climb a harder but shorter route to the summit. In general, winter alpine mountaineering requires early starts. You should do so because of the melting snow. Ideally, you want to touch the summit early morning and get out before the sun rises too high and the snow starts to getting soft. The softer the snow, the less controllable your terrain becomes. The ascent was fantastic. My best alpine climbing to date. Views were amazing and the terrain was incredibly friendly. The best conditions anyone will probably get so early into the season. Until it started to get serious, I made friends with everyone. Then, one by one, they roped up and I was left to continue my solo adventure. And I did. I put on the crampons and kept going, fascinated by the views I was unveiling by every new 100 meters climbed. At a point, I realized that the weather is warmer than anticipated. Way warmer. I get suspicious and eventually I also get the confirmation of it. The crevasses started to melt and you could now see holes on your path. Being alone got me worried. As a solo climber, if it happens that you fall into a crevasse, getting out can be a problem. I keep going. The sun was shining and the views were magnificent. Where the two climbing routes intersect, it started to get busy. It makes sense. I continue my climb and eventually I made it. I was now on top of it. What a climb, like never before. I loved it. It was smooth, warm, with magnificent views. For a solo climber, once on top, there is not much to do. You tap it, and after a short break, you start your descent. To me, going back was a problem. The sun was melting the snow fast, and going on the same route wasn't wise. By now, the crevasses were unstable, melting fast, and the snow was wet up to one meter and a half below surface. For this trip, I've anticipated many scenarios, but not this one. On one hand, I was aware of a danger, but on the other, I wanted to stick to the plan and test my limits. Nobody was going back on the Chabot route. Too dangerous. What should I do? I was aware of a danger. I knew what makes more sense to do. But I already had my decision. I was set to go back on the same path. It was dangerous, but also what I wanted. It is why I was there. It was my mission. Right after the junction, where the Vittorio Emanuele path was going down on the left, I had my first melting crevasse. It was already melting when I was going up. 
Now, at my return, I could see the holes way better. I crossed that, laying face up and trying to slide down as fast possible. Minutes later, I start sinking into the melting snow. Every new step was me going deep into the snow way above my hips. This was the right moment to return and call it quits. But I didn't. I kept going and it got worse and worse. Eventually, I almost fell into a crevasse. Obviously. I slipped through the melting snow and the only thing that kept me floating was the backpack. I jumped swimming and I didn't stop for the next good minutes. I now was activated for survival. Little did I know that it was about to get even worse. The more I was advancing, the deeper I was sinking. It started to become critical. With each new step, I had no clue where I would end. Then, rocks from above started to fall. The ice holding them steady was melting. This was dangerous. No way for me to be able to run away with such wet snow sinking me at around my chest line. I eventually made it out of air. The lesson, the thrill, the adventure and the emotions were at the highest peak possible. It is what it is. I own my choice and I somehow knew what I'm getting myself into. I was equipped with everything required to sit and wait for the night to freeze the snow so that I can continue. It wasn't necessary. I was lucky and persistent. I had enough water, but the warm weather made me run out of supply. The same warm weather burned my face through the sunscreen. The moment I started to hear the streams of water, I ran as fast as I could. Eating snow wasn't working. I needed water. From that moment, I took my time. There was no point to rush anymore. The scrambling down back to the hut was relaxing. My opportunity to enjoy the mountain and its silence. I love scrambling and I loved that no one else was crossing paths with me. What a journey. What an adventure. And you? Care to join?